Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson makes someone miss. Garrett Wilson looks to the 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Brees Hall comes up the middle. Brees Hall's loose. Brees Hall's gone. Brees Hall is gone. He walks into the end zone. Josh Allen fires it over the middle. Intercepted. Sauce Garner picks up Allen. Sauce Garner, let's go. The rookie picks off Josh Allen. Back to pass. He fires it over the middle. Touchdown! Garrett Wilson! The New York Jets tie the football game! The rookie! Ah! The Jets win! The Jets win! Ashton Davis! I sit the game! Let's go! And acquitted Williams with the tackle for loss. That's a loss of five yards. Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to another Jets Media live stream. And today we're going to be talking about the free agency frenzy that is the New York Jets. We heard a report from Diana Rossini this morning that the New York Jets are still interested in wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. I'm sure you guys are going to have some polarizing opinions about that report in the comments section. We also made a move last night signing a new offensive lineman, Wes Schweitzer to a two-year $7.5 million. This man is an offensive, versatile beast. Oh, I shouldn't say beast. I meant to say a versatile Swiss Army knife to the Jets' offensive line. This man has played at least one snap at every single position on the offensive line. That screams like a Joe Douglas-style player. He seems to be the guy that will be replacing Dan Feeney as Dan Feeney is gone and he is now signing with the Miami Dolphins. So the Jets needed to get depth at the offensive line position and that is what he is going to bring to the table. He is more of a guard. He can play right guard, left guard, and center for the New York Jets. Next up, we need to make sure we get a center. Are the Jets eyeing John Michael Schmitz in the draft or are they going to go out there and get a veteran center? We will find out. In the coming days, if not weeks. And of course, the elephant in the room is, where's Aaron Rodgers? When the heck is Aaron Rodgers going to get here? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully sometime soon. So we can finally talk about the official reality of Aaron Rodgers coming to the New York Jets. So as you guys can see right here, we have the list of all the free agent moves so far from the New York Jets, including Alan Lazard getting officially signed by the Jets this morning. He is at One Jets Drive. He signed the ink to paper. He already got interviewed, so he's officially a New York Jet. We re-signed Quincy Williams to a three-year, $18 million deal. We brought Greg the Leg back on a one-year, $3.5 million contract. Solomon Thomas is back on a one-year, up to $3.9 million deal. We also re-signed fullback Nick Bowden. I'm not sure what the contract is of that yet. And then Adam Pankey, who was signed to the Jets practice squad in the middle of the season last year, was re-signed, who was an offensive tackle. And, of course, we traded for... The Baltimore Ravens starting safety for the past couple of seasons. Chuck Clark for a 2024 seventh round pick. So those are all the latest news and all the latest uh, updates on what the Jets have been doing so far in free agency in the trade market and who we're bringing back and who we're bringing new to the equation. Now, there is one person on this list that we do not see yet. And that's Aaron Rodgers. Hopefully he can be included to the Chuck Clark trade a uh, little feature on my big board so we can finally talk about Aaron Rodgers officially coming to the New York Jets. Now, I want to get your guys' thoughts of Odell Beckham Jr. Because I'll show you the report. Um, according to Diana Rossini, the Jets are still interested in that man. Now, I know he is a polarizing topic amongst the fan base, which is why I want to get your guys' thoughts of Odell right now. I'm going to bring up the tweet so you guys can see it. All right. Let's 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 take a look. So according to Diana Rossini, she quote tweets Jordan 
run on saying that this solidifies that the Giants will not be in on Odell Beckham Jr. Diana Rossini quote tweets that man and says, the other New York team, the New York Jets, are interested and staying in touch with his side per sources. So this is definitely some interesting news because the Jets already made a move for Alan Lazard. He's our new wide receiver. Corey Davis is still on the roster. We cut Braxton Berrios. I'm assuming Corey Davis is gone. Um, I think he's going to get either cut or included in the Aaron Rodgers trade. Now, would you guys want the New York Jets to sign Odell Beckham Jr.? Let me ask the poll. Jets are still interested in OBJ. Now, I... Now, I've been getting to some debates on Twitter about what the Jets wide receiver room could look like. And I feel like it is really intriguing to hear what you guys have to say. So, how would you feel about this receiver room? Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, Elijah Moore, Odell Beckham Jr., and Denzel Mims. That is five receivers that are pretty damn deep. Now, I know some people are like, yeah, well, Richie... uh, Replace Mims with Cobb. And I'm like, no. We need two big body receivers. What if Alan Lazard goes down? We need Mims to step in there. We need that outside big threat. So Mims ain't going nowhere. Well, Richie, why do we need OBJ if we have Elijah Moore in the slot? OBJ will be replacing Berrios and the versatility of that wide receiver room. I know that you think that you just need three starting receivers, but you don't. The Jets can run four wide receiver looks. The Jets can rotate all these guys in. I know it looks like a crowded room, but it's possible. It's definitely possible. So let's get your guys' thoughts of Odell Beckham Jr. And also, if the price is right, right? Because it seems like Odell's looking for a big-time contract. My man says, pass on OBJ. Steve says, let's get him. VR says, OBJ better than Cobb, no doubt. Easy pass on Odell, says my man Caden. If it's a one-year deal, then why not? Facts. Cobb is coming to town. That's also a possibility. He can go back to the Giants for all I care, says Jaime. Don't want someone who play half a season and I don't trust piled up injuries. True. OBJ, one-year, $8 million. I can definitely get behind that. OBJ, for what price? That's really the question. Yeah, I think the, the thing is that we have to keep in mind would you want OBJ for the right price? And I think the right price is something along the lines of right here. One year, around $8 million. Yeah. Or maybe a two-year deal that's fully guaranteed in year one, and we can get out of it in year two if possible. Mims, odd man out in that lineup. I would have to disagree because, like I said, we need a big-body receiver behind Alan Lazard. Guys, injuries happen and it's the unfortunate reality. We need and Denzel Mims excels in blocking. If Alan Lazard goes down, we need Mims to step in there. There's no other receiver on the roster besides Corey Davis who we're assuming we're getting rid of, who's a big body threat that can block on the outside and go up there get 50-50 balls and be a vertical threat like Lazard and Mims. We need to keep Mims for that reason. And I'm not saying I believe Mims is going to break out this season, but just for depth purposes, I think it would be better for the Jets to keep him. My man Jets Forever wants to give Mims the ball. Jonah Williams has requested a trade. Go for it. There's a reason why he's out. The Bengals just traded or signed Orlando Brown because Jonah Williams gave up 20 sacks in two years. I'm good on Jonah Williams. No, thank you. OBJ ain't going to be cheap. Who knows how much he'll play? And he's a cancer in the locker room. No denying the talent is there, but Garrett Wilson is the talent. Yep. And I'm really in the middle with OBJ. If we land him, it's like, okay, how can I complain of getting an Odell Beckham Jr.? If he's healthy, he is a great talent in the league. But he does come with baggage, and that's a fact. Can we trade for Hopkins? I do not think that's in the equation. I do not think that's in the equation. Harlan, 122 watching, only 30 likes. Hit that button, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, hit that like button. You guys know the drill by now. No? You know the drill by now, right? 
smash that like button. Let's get to 100. 100. Would you want Leonard Fournette? Um, I think he's a little washed, if I had to guess. No, thank you. I'd rather get like a Kareem Hunt if we're going to bring in a veteran running back. Like John says, yes. Good afternoon, Montauk. Should take Yash Nijman from Packers. Second round tender, great swing tackle, and cheap 4.3 mil. Yeah, I'm sure that, that the Jets are going to try to get some type of players back in that Packers deal. Um, and guys, the holdup on this Jets-Packers deal is simple. The Packers want a first-round pick, if not multiple, and the Jets do not want to sacrifice a first-round pick. Because, and why should they? Why the heck would the Packers believe that the Jets should sacrifice a first-round pick for a player that might just play one season? It's just ridiculous. Like, be realistic, Green Bay. I get that he's a Hall of Fame quarterback, and he's been with you for forever, but you messed up with him. He doesn't want you. Rodgers can simply walk into your building and demand his $60 million, and then you're screwed if that happens. Imagine Brees with Elliott. I don't, I'm not, I don't want Zeke. I'm good with Zeke. Rick, Rick Dog, nine with the $5 super chat. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate the $5 super chat. Everyone give my man Rick Dog nine some dono hype in the chat. Did you see that uh, Chris Canty quarterback list on ESPN today? The disrespect. I did not see it. What's the what's the QB list? I did see Good Morning Football's quarterback list this morning. They were listing their top five quarterbacks in the AFC, and Rodgers was in all those lists. Ooh, it feels good. Zeke with a vet minimum? Maybe you can get me on that. If it's a vet minimum, maybe. We'll see. But Zeke... Ugh. Richie, thoughts on JMS? Jets met with him at Senior Bowl Combine. We're at his pro day, and he had a top 30 visit with him. Even you Stadium tweeted that the Jets love him. Yeah, I would not be shocked if the Jets traded up to get him. Um, obviously, we have to figure out where we're drafting. We don't know if we're giving up our first-round pick, our second-round pick yet for Rodgers. But I think that the Jets are eyeing him. And they have to eye him. If we don't sign a veteran center, they have to get him. And I would be all for it. I've been begging the Jets to freaking draft a center every year, it feels like. But they just never do it. So I think um, John Michael Smith would be a home run pick for the Jets. Glaring hole. But I will say it's a little risky going into the draft with no center. Very risky. Hunt sounds good, but I think he holds out for a better projected carry share. True. Ben Jones at center. Yeah, I like Ben Jones as well. I, I just want to make sure that the center position is taken care of because if we're going all in this year with Aaron Rodgers, I'd prefer Ben Jones because he's a veteran. We don't have to worry about development. Like a rookie center, there's going to be growing pains as a rookie traditionally. So, like, I'd rather get a Ben Jones who is a, a veteran. But we'll see. Imagine we get Zeke and OBJ for the low. I mean, that would be pretty wild. Then then we're really, you know who we're turning into if we get Zeke and OBJ in the low, guys? We are turning into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Tom Brady. That means veterans are coming for le less money to play with Rodgers to go all in for the Super Bowl. That's what that means. Are you done with McGovern? I'm assuming he's the Jets are done with him. Uh, otherwise, I think they'd be re-signing him. I mean, he's still available, so they could pivot to just re-sign him. He's a durable center, but he's there's a lot better options to upgrade. I do want to talk a little bit more about Wes Schweitzer. So this man has played every single position on the offensive line. That's something we're waiting for Elijah Vera Tucker to be able to say. He needs some snaps at center, and then AVT can say that. It's really awesome that the Jets are getting depth at the position that is a versatile weapon. Because when you have a backup like Wes Schweitzer, anybody that goes down, especially at the guard spots, he can plug in at left or right guard. He can plug in at center. 
He can even play tackle if we're in that desperate, which we hope he never has to do. So Wes Schweitzer is a perfect Joe Douglas pick pickup. Not saying he's an excellent player. He has 60 career games with Washington. And who was he with before Washington? I forgot. But Wes Schweitzer is a good pickup to replace Dan Feeney. Now we have to make sure we go out there and get another offensive lineman uh, or two or three even. I wouldn't mind Devin Singletary as running back two or three. Me either. I think that's a good pickup. I would like Devin Singletary, to be honest. He, he he puts up like 700 yards a season, it feels like. I'll take that. Hundred percent, take that. Is he a Herbig? I look at him more as a Nate Feeney, Dan Feeney, excuse me, and a Herbig. Herbie was really good as depth at the guard spot, but the cool thing about him is he can plug in at center, which Herbig couldn't. So he's more versatile than Herbig, but he definitely replaces a Herbig and a Feeney. Yes. Rick Dog on a five dollar says number one Holmes, Mahomes, I'm assuming you mean Burrow, Allen, Herbert, Lawrence. Yeah. No. We're talking about Aaron Rodgers here, folks. This is just not true from Chris Canty, by the way. This is his list, I'm assuming. We're talking about a quarterback who is arguably one of the best quarterbacks of our generation and a Hall of Fame first ballot Hall of Famer. None of these people on this list besides Patrick Mahomes has done anything close to Aaron Rodgers in their career yet, which is why this doesn't make sense. I get that people are basing it off of last season and their projected seasons upcoming, but this is just hate. This is just hate. That's what that is. People are just assuming he's washed because he had one season without Devontae Adams, without Hackett, who he loves, having a thumb injury, and go look at the stats that he put up, guys. If Aaron Rodgers put up those numbers for the Jets, that's like a season that we haven't had in years for a quarterback. His, that's the fun thing about this, guys. Aaron Rodgers' down year is the Jets' best season for a quarterback. It's sad to say, but it's the reality. The Rodgers disrespect has been insane. Everyone's sticking with the LOL Jets theme as always. Let them. Let them. I'll welcome it. Canty said that everyone on that list is, has a better arm than Rodgers. <laughs> Bro, Rodgers literally has the most talented arm of all time, in my opinion. I And I'm not just saying that now because he's going to be a Jet. I've been saying that for years. I've been saying that Aaron Rodgers is the most talented quarterback in the NFL history. But Tom Brady is the best quarterback, and he's the most accomplished. I've said that for years. I'm not just saying that now because I'm turning on my Jets bias hat. So don't believe that I'm doing. I believe that Rodgers has the most talent we've ever seen at a quarterback. His arm just is different. What has Herbert done? Facts. What do you think will happen at the safety position of linebacker? Notice a trend here. The Jets every offseason seems to be have holes at linebacker and safety. Remember we were talking about that last year? Do you remember all offseason we're like, oh, the safeties and linebackers, weakness, weakness. And what happened, guys? Top five defense. I think the safety and linebacker position is getting a little overblown by the fan base that it's weak. When I think C.J. Mosley is literally an all-pro. Quincy Williams is back. I know that Quan Alexander potentially not returning. There's a hole there that needs to be filled. The safety position with moving on from LaMarcus Joyner, we trade for Chuck Clark. Okay, we got Jordan Whitehead. We got Chuck Clark. We got Tony Adams. We got Ashton Davis, and we got Will Parks. Those are five safeties. So I think the Jets will draft some linebackers. And don't for, don't sleep on Jamie and Truwood. Don't sleep on Hamza Najaldine either. Like, I think that the linebacker... And safety position is a little overblown where the scheme and the talent around them is so freaking good that we don't need to go all in and pay top-tier safeties or top-tier linebackers. You feel? 
I'm looking forward to Tony Adams' progression. I, I would love for him to get win that starting job, man. Love that. We do need Quan back. Yes, we do, Dakota. And I really hope we get the news that he's back. He he added such needed juice to that defense. Guys, if you're just tuning into the show for the first time, do your boy a gigantic solid favor and hit that like button. We got 74 likes with 200 people watching. Let's get to 100 likes, baby. Let's get it going. Gardner Johnson is too expensive. Great player. Would make the defense better, but the Jets are not going to invest that money, that much money into his safety. If they do, we'll see. Get them likes up. You heard it, Rich. Would love to see Quan back as a depth option. He'd be more than depth. He'd start, but yes, we need him back. Make it a package deal. Throw in Zach. Tony Adams should be a starter this season. I, I love what I saw from him at the back end of the season last year. Yes. What's the next signing you would make, Richie? Resign Quan Alexander. Uh, I'd, I'd look for... I don't know. I mean, the first... It's not a signing, but my first move would be trading for friggin' Aaron Rodgers. The Jets are reportedly in touch with Odell Beckham Jr. Okay, so this is happening. I I would be shocked if the Jets landed him, bro. I really, really would be. But if we did, bro? If we did, though? My gosh. We don't need linebackers. I agree with you, Jets Forever. I think we just got to re-sign Quan and we're good. Re-sign Quan and we're good. Even though I know you're going to say, yeah, but we got, you don't need to even do that. We got Sherwood and Nagelde. I hear you, but you got to re-sign Quan, bro. When is the Rodgers trade happening? Good question. I wish I knew. Between Whitehead, Mosey, Lawson, and trading CD, the Jets still have a lot of restructuring to do. Yeah, um... I don't think Jordan Whitehead's going anywhere, guys. I know a lot of you guys want him gone, but can we stop like just pretending that Jordan Whitehead is a bum? He was he played every single game for the Jets and was part of a top five defense and one of the best secondaries in the league. Was he great? Was he one of the best players on the defense? No, he was not. He was serviceable. The scheme is good enough to hide his weaknesses. Did he miss some tackles? Did he have some bad plays? Yeah, of course he did. But I don't think the Jets can find a replacement that's better than him right now based off who's available for the price that we have him. I don't think Whitehead is this bum that you guys are portraying him as. He made some big hits. He made some good plays. He made some mistakes here and there. He's not a, a he's not the star of the defense. We don't need stars everywhere. We need quality players, and that's what he is. He's a quality football player. So... I don't know where this narrative is coming from that Whitehead is all of a sudden this bona fide bum. I just don't think he's as bad as some people think. I'm not going to sit here and say he was perfect or elite. That's not what I'm saying. But like, I don't know, man. Maybe I got to go rewatch the games or something. I would love to see if if Nazaldine got some – I mean, the Jets did cut him. So it's like, what do they see in him? Sherwood is the backup Mike linebacker behind CJ, who actually looks really good whenever CJ went down. And we got Chuck Clark, baby. He's a bum because Jets fans are never satisfied. And that's what makes Jets fans phenomenal. Modine. Richie, you're the only guy on Jets diehard who did not come across as not having anything to do. Now, Mo, I don't understand this. If this is it, one of your insults to me, like you have thousands of insults towards me, or a compliment, or just a neutral take. But I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> 
We need free safety. Tony Adams. CBS Sports has an article on an ideal trade for Rodgers. Jets get Rodgers. Packers get 2024 conditional second, 2025 conditional fourth. What do you think? Yeah. That's what I want the package to be, bro. Well, Mo, I appreciate the compliment, my friend. It means a lot coming from you. Those are those are really rare to get a compliment from my man Mo. So when it does happen, appreciate you, Mo. Sherwood announcing our superstar linebackers. What do you guys think of Jets Forever saying that? I like Tony Adams a lot, but to start, probably not. But I like him as depth. And if he has to come in in certain packages at the nickel or dime packages, hell yeah. I want Rodgers now. Me too, Momo. I like the trade comp, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I bet you that's what the Jets are trying to get. Jalen Mills just got released. Yes, he did. Patriots getting worse. Patriots. What do you guys think of the Patriots signings? They got Juju Smith. They got James Robinson, and then they just signed Mike Giusecki. Ooh. Scary. I do like Malik Willis. He was a generational talent coming out. I would trade Sauce or pick 13 for him and have him learn behind Rodgers. Wow, I beg that this is troll guys this has to be a troll right this man just said i would trade sauce gardner for malik willis oh fm please tell me you're trolling like even if this is a troll job it gets me pissed off even this is even if this is a troll it still gets me pissed. To put Sauce Garner in the conversation for a trade should be banned. Oh my gosh. He doubles down saying, I'm not a troll. Are you a Jets fan? Because... If you're not a Jets fan, then that makes sense. If you're a Titans fan that you want sauce, it makes sense. FM is Colin Coward's burner account. <laughs> That's Jets Forever's cousin. Actually, you got to give Jets Forever credit. He was on Sauce Gardner all last year during the draft process. And wanted him from day one. Sauce is retiring a jet. Oh, yeah. Sauce will be better than Revis. The scary part about this is that Sauce Garner's ahead of Revis. Because Revis did not have a rookie season like Sauce. And that's no disrespect to our, our guy, Revis. It's just the truth. What position do you think the Jets take in the draft? I'm thinking offensive tackle. I like Malik Willis. What is the issue? The issue is packaging Sauce Gardner for a bum quarterback is the issue. Sauce Gardner is generational. Jets fan from Indy with the $2 super chat. Grab Isaiah McKenzie to replace Berrios. That is possible if the Jets want to get their backup slot. Um, if OBJ falls out. Or they can go through the draft. They could go through the draft to replace Barrios as well. Oh 
Oh, man, we got people coming to his defense. Malik Will is great. Sauce overrated. Oh, man, I ain't going to give that any any breath. <laughs> What's the problem with Broderick Jones? Uh, I don't know. Is there a problem with that? If we trade our second, we got to trade back from 13 or 15 if a first-rounder swap is part of the Rodgers deal. Hey, if that has to be a, a first-round swap to move down to 15 instead of sacrificing the first-round pick, if that has to get it done, yes. Now, this is a good take from FM. I think DJ Reed is the best CB in the NFL. Maybe that's why he wants to get rid of Sauce. <laughs> I don't know. Sauce shut down Jamar Chase and Stephon Diggs and Justin Jefferson. Well, actually, he didn't shut down JJ. DJ Reed was the one that gave up that touchdown on JJ, though, like that game. Remember, Richie, a lot of new cats fueling the fire for fun. True that. Eccles better than Reed and Carter the second. I like Eccles. But do you guys remember the game against the Packers? Um, Sauce Gardner went down with like, I don't know if that was his, was that the game where he went down with like a um, head injury? And Eccles came in. And what did Aaron Rodgers do? Aaron Rodgers targeted Eccles immediately and hit Alan Lazard on a touchdown with Eccles in coverage. Yeah. Eccles is not better than Reed or Carter the second, but I do love Eccles as depth. MC2 is a solid nickel. MC2 is a beast. He's very underrated. I love him. Sauce Garner shut down Alan Lazard. Yes, he did. And then right when Echoes subbed in for Sauce, he got burned by him for a touchdown. That tells you how good Sauce is. Now, that was Echoes. Go watch it. If I'm JD, I'm taking the best pure right tackle in the draft. I'm not taking a left tackle. If Becton and Brown go down, I kick ABT to left tackle and putting Wes at right guard. Um, I think I don't these these draft prospects at tackle can usually go right or left. But I, I hear where you're coming from. Can you believe the Texans took Stingley before Sauce? My God, <laughs> we are lucky. I mean, Stingley can definitely still turn out to be a beast, but boy, are we lucky. This Jets defense would not be top five if without having Sauce gone on our team, by the way. DJ Sauce and CM2, or Michael Carter 2, probably the best CB to have on the field for the Jets. No doubt. Oh, man, this man says preferred and still do Tibbs over Sauce. Who won Rookie of the Year? Who was all defensive? Oh, excuse me. Who was all pro as a rookie? Who led the NFL in pass breakups? I couldn't disagree more. Does Vic Vangio worry you at all as Dolphins DC in their moves? It doesn't. They don't worry me. But they're definitely going to be significantly better than last year. For sure. They don't worry me. I think our defense is still better. I think Jalen Ramsey's a little past his prime. He's definitely still a damn good football player. He's still going to be making plays for the Dolphins. I think I think Xavier Howard is one of the most overrated corners in the league. Um, I think he's just a name at this point. I mean, when we were playing the Dolphins, we were torching him. Byron Jones more than him, and that's why the Dolphins got rid of him. But I think X was really good for the Dolphins a few years back, and now, I mean, Jalen Ramsey is better than Xavier Howard, in my opinion. Way better. But with that being said, the Miami Dolphins defense with Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb, Wilkins, they need linebacker help. I know they just got a new linebacker under Vangio. They're going to be a lot better defense this year than last year, so... The Dolphins are getting better. 
Yeah, DJ Reed definitely deserved Pro Bowl over X last year. That proves that he's just a name at this point. Cannot wait for an actual Jets offense scoring touchdowns. We'll get to see a ton of choreographed celebrations. I cannot wait. We need a time machine to get another Nick Mangold. Oh, Andrew, wouldn't that be phenomenal? Rich, the trolls are out in force today. If Jalen Carter is there at 13, do you take him? I am worried about Jalen Carter. His draft value is plummeting. Now, he was going to be the number one overall pick, and if he falls all the way to 13, do you think it's worth the risk for the Jets to take that risk on that man? Just going through, through some legal trouble and definitely some mental issues? Seems like a lot of people want Luke Weipler. We missed our chance not getting Creed Humphrey. I wanted Creed so bad. I wanted him bad. Who did we take over Creed Humphrey? I forgot. Someone remind me? But I wanted Creed in that draft. I'm on the Wipler train, guys. Hopefully the Rodgers trade happens today. Yeah, it could happen at any given moment. Right now, tonight, tomorrow, next day, the next day, today after that, I don't know. Jets took Elijah Moore. Okay, that makes sense. Will Max Mitchell come back better? I sure hope so. Max Mitchell is a very underrated piece to this offensive line. I prefer him as depth. I'd rather him not be the starting right tackle. But I think I'd prefer Makai Beckton being the starting left tackle, Dwayne Brown being the backup left tackle, and the Jets drafting a right tackle, and the Max Mitchell being the backup. That's my vision. My vision of the offensive line is Makai winning out that left tackle spot, Drafting a rookie for right tackle. Max Mitchell's the backup right tackle, and Dwayne Brown's the backup left tackle. That's my dream. I don't want to see Dwayne Brown starting. I want him as a swing backup. Well, he's more of a left tackle, but Max Mitchell will be the swing. Does George Fan have a future? I saw that the Dolphins are in on him. I don't think his I think his knee's done. Richie, would you go after Calais Campbell and Justin Houston for veteran players if you were JD? Calais Campbell, yeah. Justin Houston, probably not. We're good at edge, but we're not good at D tackle. Bring me Calais Campbell, bro. That's a win now move. Mitchell played surprisingly well. Yeah, Max Mitchell's a damn good football player for the value we got him at. Fourth round pick. I love Max Mitchell. Absolutely. And they should give him a chance to win out the job, no doubt. It sucks that his uh, his season got cut short, and hopefully he's going to be fully ready to go this season. Zach Wilson is better than Willis. Stop. And that's not saying much. Well, hey, where are these Malik Willis people coming from? <laughs> Malik Willis. Buffalo Bills got Josh Allen. Well, hopefully the New York Jets will have Aaron Rodgers, who's better than Josh Allen. Brown and Panky are the backup tackles. I think Panky's going to be a practice squad guy. At least I hope. I'd rather them have deeper depth than Panky. What about shifting ABT to right tackle and pick up a guard? Draft an OT and let him as backup. I don't know. I think ABT is the is like he his potential be maximized at guard. And that's not to say he's not a really good at tackle, but I think the Jets would be better for him as guard because if we miss out on a tackle like what happened last year, then he can swing out to tackle. You want to keep ABT at guard because that's where his max, that's where his potential will be maximized. 
And he'd prefer to play guard as well. So the Jets are going to keep him at right guard. Aren't we missing some D tackles? What are we going to do there? I think that's where we're going to really target in the draft. We're going to go heavy trenches in this year's draft, guys. Center, offensive tackle, defensive tackles. This is going to be a heavy trench warfare in the, in the draft this season. No doubt. Because I don't see any free agent that I like. Clay's Campbell, sign me up. But I still would like to draft the defensive tackle. I don't see an offensive tackle that the Jets can bring in free agency. So you got to draft one there, hopefully at 13. Let's go. It's good to see Alan Lazard, by the way, speak to the media. And be officially a freaking New York Jet. How do we feel about Alan Lazard, guys? What are you guys' thoughts? What are your expectations for Alan? Let's go. Good chemistry with Rodgers. Oh, yeah. Lazard got that Corey Davis contract for sure. I like Lazard. Sure hands. Good route runner and stays healthy. And a phenomenal blocker. And he's a really good teammate, which is big. We want to have good people in the locker room that gets along with the team. That's important. You said it best. Lazard is a younger Corey D. Yes, he is. D tackle scares me. Who you think? Who would you pick in the draft? Um, I'm not sure. I know a lot of people are contemplating Jalen Carter in, at 13, but I'd stay away from that personally. I'd rather the Jets go deeper into the draft, find some gems. You know, who I wish was still on the team. Um, what's his name? Oh my God! Why does his Why did his name just disappear from my brain? Brain fart. Wow. His his name just... All right, I'll come back to me. Jonathan Marshall. Okay, there it is. That was scary. I wish Jonathan Mar Marshall was still on the team, but the Steelers snagged him away from our practice squad last year. Ah, that stunk. Because Jonathan Marshall was playing really good for us when he stepped on the field, and now would be his time. The best ability is availability, and that's Allen. And I feel like he's going to help us in the red zone. Yes, exactly. He's a red zone threat. He's a 50-50 guy that can go up there and snag some balls for Aaron Rodgers. Good, good familiarity with Nathaniel Hackett. And by the way, Lazard said that he was – like he had his eyes on the Jets even before that Rodgers was linked here because of the coaching staff. Because of Sala and Hackett. It is really interesting to hear how much people played for Hackett in Green Bay loves him. And then he goes to Denver and plummets. And then there's a narrative that Hackett is a bum. Where Rodgers just would go to war for him. As well as Hack, as well as Lazard. Lazard wanted to come to the Jets because of Hackett. Tells you a lot. Bring back Mo. Imagine. Lazard is also six foot five. Big time. Imagine if Carter next to Big Q. Yeah, I don't know why. Do I have so much? Why do I have so much doubt on Carter? I just don't like players that are projected high in the draft, and then as the draft process continues, he's his value goes down. I don't like those type of players. Too risky for me. My man Jimmy's in the chat. 
I really don't get why we re-sign Bowden when Ruckert can play fullback and be used similar to the 49ers Usyk. Uh Yeah, interesting. Um, I guess the Jets want to continue to have their fullback. And Bowden didn't do anything for the Jets last year. It was even on their 53-man roster. I mean, what did Nick Bowden do? I agree, Jimmy. I don't really know what their plan is with Nick Bowden. Jermaine Johnson, that's a that's a slept on player this upcoming season, man. I think that um, he was lost in the stardom of the rookie class of Sauce and Garrett and Brees. He had a solid rookie season, definitely nothing crazy. But I think Jermaine Johnson has that breakout potential. Oh yeah, he was hurt last year. Okay, maybe that's why. Draft the D tackle in the later rounds for sure. I think it's fair to be nervous about Carter, but he is a beast. I'd be surprised if he fell to 13, and we'd have to really consider it. Yeah. It really also depends on offensive tackle, though. I'd prefer to go O tackle over Carter. That's more important. Protect freaking Rodgers, please. Hope you're good. Richie was excited. I have to see you on 1JD Films. Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate that. It was, uh, it was a pleasure to be on there. And Jimmy, I don't know if you saw it, but on the AFC's roundtable, go check out my video. I absolutely obliterated and won my game. I won't tell you the final score, but listening to your listening to your uh, things, I changed up my playbook. I traded for Cooper Cup because you were telling me that we need a receiver on this team. I traded for Cooper Cup, and that man went crazy. So go check out my Madden video on the AFC's roundtable if you find if you find a chance, Jimmy, you, you'd enjoy it. I know you'd enjoy it. Richie, he had a life learning lesson. He'll be fine moving forward. Carter is the get at 13. Yeah. I mean, if he's available at 13, it's going to be really hard to pass on him. No doubt. Richie, how did the jets contact you to be in the jets video? Um, their director, Seth Bradley, he uh, DM me on Twitter. Who was the bigger steal last season, Clemens or Mitchell? Um, I'd say right now, Mitchell has shown more consistency, but Clemens hasn't really got his opportunity yet. Oh, I had to chug some water there. Stay hydrated, kids. We got a delusional Buffalo Bills fan in the chat. Clemson is uh, Clemens is a monster. Oh, yeah. My man is doubling down. No Zeke zone. Look at Kayvon Thibodeau. Take Carter. I doubt he falls at 13 anyway. Did we get Bryce Huff back? Yeah, we placed a second round tenure on him, which means he's probably staying. Clemens is legit. Maybe he can slide in a D tackle. I mean, that man's a monster. I know he's a DN, but slide him inside if we have to. Hey, and Tragic Artist is exactly what I just said. Personally, I think Clemens could be D tackle as well and fill that rankings role. Yep. Clemens really a scary dude. He's terrifying, and I freaking love it. Thoughts on bum Carl Lawson? Hmm. Uh, definitely not. I definitely don't think of him like you. I do not find him a bum. He had a career high in sacks last year coming off a torn Achilles. And he didn't have a season where he lit up the league. He didn't have an elite season by any means, but he was a big reason for pressure rate. Don't look at the box score and think that sacks tells you the story. You got to look at quarterback pressure, quarterback hits, win rate, all those things. He had seven sacks. If you have seven sacks, you are no bum. And that was also coming off an Achilles tear, which is one of the worst injuries you can get. So 
He ain't no bum, bro. I really hope he returns. Lawson needs to restructure, though. I agree. I would like to extend him and restructure his deal to push the cap hit down the line. Lawson got held every play. Facts. And he demands double teams a lot. Facts. Richie, Lyle Collins was supposed to be a number one pick. He fell out of the draft altogether because of an issue. Tunsil fell because of an issue. Carter will fall to us if Philly don't grab him. Yeah, I don't think he's going to fall to 13, though. Carl Lawson is not a bum. He is a pretty good player. He did come off a bad injury. Facts. What is going on with the tackle position? Need more of a lock at both sides. So some interesting news we heard, actually, that the Jets were in on Orlando Brown. The Jets were in on Orlando Brown. That tells you what they think about that. Would you trade Sauce for Laramie Tunsil? No. What's with this guy with his infatuation with Sauce? Sauce is a generational talent, bro. We're not giving up Sauce Garner for anything. I don't care. He makes this defense top five. Without Sauce Gardner, the defense is not anything. Tunsil's a good player, but no. Absolutely not. Not mad we didn't pay OB, but it would be nice to have figured out before the draft. You talking about Orlando Brown? Um, yeah, the Jets being in on Orlando Brown is an interesting one. Sauce is a freaking diamond. You can never give out. Exactly. Baker Mayfield would have took us to the Super Bowl. I mean, last year, you mean? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Any quarterback last year, Jets fans can just... Imagine we had, like, who was just a quality quarterback last year? I don't know. Throw freaking... Um... I don't know. I can't think now. Any quarterback on the team last year, the Jets are in the playoffs making noise. I would rather pay a veteran center and draft a left tackle at 13. Yeah, I, I think Ben Jones is that veteran center. Richie, you drafted a QB in late rounds. Looks like there may be a few good ones. Toon, Stetson, etc. might be available to take a flyer on. Yeah, wouldn't put it past me. I think the Jets could be looking at a quarterback room of Aaron Rodgers, Zach Wilson, and a rookie. That's possible. Because they have not signed a quarterback in free agency yet. Have we met with Ben Jones? I'm not too sure. I haven't seen a report about that. Um, would love Ben Jones. Yeah, I think the that's the biggest hole right now on this team is center. So we gotta we gotta really buckle down at the center spot. All right, I don't know what news we're waiting for, but we need the Jets have been very quiet, very quiet. This year in free agency because we're got, we're trying to bring it Aaron Rodgers. That's why. And it drives me crazy that we're at this situation right now with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Like the Packers are being so frustrating with this whole process, dog. 
really is pushing my buttons. Pushing my damn buttons. <laughs> Trying to figure out who A-Rod is recruiting to us. Facts. Wonder who that is. Richie, congrats on being on 1JD Films. Regards to trade for Rodgers, the Jets should wait until the draft. The Jets select the 13th pick, then call Green Bay, offer second-round pick, second-round pick in 2024. Um, so if they wait all the way until the draft for Rodgers, then they'll secure us having our 13th pick. Yeah, I mean, the luxury of waiting it out is then we don't have to sacrifice any picks from this year's draft class. It's all future picks down the line. And thank you, Manny, for congratulating me on my appearance last night. It was really, really special to see that. Do you think we can part ways with Corey Davis and evolve him in the trade to Green Bay to solidify getting Rodgers without giving up a first-round pick? Yes. I don't think Corey Davis is going to be the reason why we cannot give up a first, but I think he's going to be included in the deal, no doubt. Uh, I think the Jets have not released Corey Davis yet because they they want to tr uh, trade him to the Packers. That's my theory. That's my theory. Guys, we got 131 likes with 272 people watching. If you could do me a gigantic favor, hit that thumbs up button for everybody tuning into the show. We genuinely appreciate that. Smash that like button if you guys are enjoying today's program. Let's go. So again, if you're new to the, the stream... Here's the list of all the moves the Jets have made. Also, according to Diana Rossini of ESPN, the New York Jets are still interested and plugged in with Odell Beckham Jr. Now, if the Jets sign Odell Beckham Jr., then we have a lot of things to talk about. We got a lot of things to talk about because the whole offense is just flooded with playmakers. To the point where it's like getting a little crazy, crazy. And I also don't know how the Jets could afford OBJ, and there's no way they are going to pay him that type of money. There's no way. We have Elijah Moore. We already have Garrett Wilson, obviously. We don't even really need to discuss him. We signed Garrett uh, Allen Lazard. Corey Davis is probably gone. And we have Denzel Mims. So that's four receivers. We need a fifth. Is OBJ that fifth guy? And they're going to roll with those five? Oh, my gosh. My mm. Woo-wee. She's not talking about the Bills. She's talking about the Jets. She literally said the New York Jets. The New York Jets. And Alan Lazard, by the way, guys, said today, it feels good that 12 is going to be my quarterback again. So anyone that's doubting the Jets landing Rodgers still, that it's not official, yes. All right, folks, we're going to wrap up today's show here at the one-hour mark. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in to another Jets Media live show. The free agency watch is happening. We'll be live again tomorrow to give you any other inside information of what's going on around the New York Jets world. If there's a breaking news that happens today, I'll be going live and give you guys my thoughts of that later as well. If the Jets sign anybody else, if the trade happens, you know that we will be live breaking it all down. So just want to say again, guys, thank you for tuning in to Jets Media and hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and enjoy St. Patrick's Day if you're celebrating that today. And let's freaking go, Jets. I love you all. Peace and love. And uh, hopefully we can make some moves today, tomorrow, because we still got a lot of moves to be made to really fill out this roster. So, again, thank you all for tuning in to Jets Media. 
Have a great rest of your day and stay safe tonight. Peace out, everybody. Peace.